My name is Cheryl Mears, I'm 57 years old, I'm from the Orlando, Florida area. Um, I'm in information technology. I've been in the field probably over about, oh, close to about 40 years. Um, I love solving problems and, and that's why I really love this field. And with the addition of cybersecurity on top of it, it just makes things very exciting. Yes, it's very stressful, um, but I do love that aspect of my job. And I also love bodybuilding. Um, I got into it about uh, seven years ago and I will do it till the day I die probably. I just really enjoy the sport. About, oh, it's almost about 40 years ago, I was diagnosed with a uh, chronic illness called ulcerative chronic colitis. And that has to deal with the uh, GI tract, if you will, your intestines. And back then, there wasn't a lot of internet, a lot of information. Are you a personal trainer, online fitness coach, or gym owner on the verge of burnout? Are you wanting to grow your fitness business but can't add more hours to your hectic schedule? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. But it really changed my life um, to the point I was constantly sick, going to the hospitals, things of that nature. And back then, I always wanted to get into bodybuilding, but I just couldn't. You know, physically, I just could not get into it. So over the years, um, different things happened. Um, in 2003, I had my colon removed, um, uh, some serious health issues there. But it was around 2015 where things kind of changed and I was able to get a little bit more into fitness. Um, so I joined, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, oh, a CrossFit class. I joined CrossFit and I really liked it. And some of the people out there um, were bodybuilders, uh, were actually bikini competitors. And they're like, yeah, you know, you should compete. You should try this. I had no clue what I was getting into, but I'm like, I'm no bikini girl. I'm, I'm not sticking my butt out there and all that kind of stuff. And, and nothing against, you know, um, bikini competitors. But at the time I was around like late forties. So I'm like, that's not happening. So they said, why don't you go into figure? I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So um, I competed in figure. It was at Europa in Orlando. It was my first show. Um, I got a uh, third in novice and I was hooked at that point. I really loved it, but I never prepped like you're supposed to prep. But the one thing I found is that it was helping my condition. Because one of the things um, with any kind of IBS or intestinal related issues is you have to eat clean. And bodybuilding promotes that. A lot of people don't put the two together, but bodybuilding really is a healthy sport from that perspective with the eating. So it really helped me out a lot. So 2017 comes around and I said, go big or go home. So I, I'm going to go for my pro card. So I started prep in about March of 2017. And unfortunately, I got diagnosed with uh, triple negative breast cancer. So I had to stop prep, of course, um, got treated for uh, cancer, went through several surgeries. And then at the end of it, I said, let's do a few shows. You know, I'm not obviously going to go get a pro card, but I said, let's go ahead and do this. So um, did two shows in Florida, did very well. Then the next year I said, we're going to go after that pro card. I don't care what life hits at me. We're going to get that pro card. And we did. So went to uh, Masters Nationals and got my, I won over 45 and over 50 uh, in women's physique. So I was very excited about that. And then um, 2019 came around and my condition kind of took a turn again. Um, I was having really bad issues, but I still competed, but it just, I just wasn't as good on stage. Um, my condition really took a toll on me that year. Then 2020 came around and, you know, the height of COVID, um, I think it was around March of that year where COVID hit. Shows were being canceled left and right, but I was still in prep. I said, I'm still going to hit a show. And unfortunately, uh, June 18th was the exact day of that year. I was rushed to the emergency room. Um, I had 
my stomach was hurting me. I mean, I've never felt this kind of pain in my life. And the only thing that I remember is my daughter dropping me off at the emergency room because this is time during COVID. So she wasn't allowed in. No family members, no nothing. And I woke up a week later in ICU. I could barely see or talk. I didn't know what happened to me, but I overheard people talking about me, you know, my stats and my age and all that, and basically saying, I'm not making it through the night. And that's all I know. I remember going in with pain and waking up and going, damn, what is happening to me? And no one's talking to me. No one's there. But I've heard that I'm probably not going to make it through the night. And I still don't know what's wrong with me. Come to find out that I had what they call an intestinal twist. Um, and when your intestines twist, you can't untwist them. The only thing you could do is cut them out. For me, um, they had to cut out almost all of it. I've only got nine feet left. Most people don't even understand how drastic that is. Um, I can barely hold food in. Um, my nutrient level is very low because I maybe get 10 or 15 minutes for the food to stay in and then everything starts coming out. I don't have a long time for those nutrients to really absorb. And there's such a slew of other problems. But I remember when that happened and I was able to talk to my daughter. I think she's the one that really saved me from all of this because she was on the phone and she's crying and she's like, mom, I'm so sorry I did this to you. And she's going on and on. And I really think my my mom instincts come came in. Any mother out there listening to this knows when your kid is hurting, whatever, you're going to do anything in your power to make that right. And I could not die knowing that she thought this was her fault. She just drove me to the emergency room. But the thing was, is that uh, I think it was about three days after I was in the emergency room, she had to make the call. And they told her, if we don't do the surgery, she will die. If we do the surgery, she'll probably die. Um, so you have to make a decision. And she's 19 years old. She's by herself. I could not let her live with thinking that this was her fault. I mean, there was no way. And she was like, mom, you're going to get better. You're going to go back on stage. You're going to get back in the bodybuilding. I know you're going to do this. And it wasn't that bodybuilding was so important, but I was leading up to a show. She knows my passion. And that's what the conversation was about. So I remember just lying there going, I don't know what is wrong with me, but I'm going to do everything in my power to survive this. There's, there's no way I'm going to let this go. And by some miracle, I made it, which is awesome, you know. And one of the foundations um, besides, you know, of course, you know, my faith and my beliefs and everything was the nutritional foundation that bodybuilding is built on. And, and when I tell this to people, some people go, oh, you're crazy, Cheryl. There is no way. But I remember when they gave me my first meal, it was garbage, You've seen hospital food, you know, mashed potatoes, gravy you know, and all that. I refused to eat. And they kept saying, you have to eat to get better. And I said, I will not eat this garbage. I refuse. So I had the nurse text my daughter, um, get me protein powder and protein bars. I cannot eat what's in this hospital. Um, she was able to leave it with the uh, security guard. And that's what I did for several weeks on end. If they didn't bring me good food, I was eating that protein powder in bars and the doctors were on base. They're like, good for you. This is the right thing you should be doing. But no one in the hospital could give me good food, which didn't make sense to me. But I knew on my deathbed that I had to eat as healthy, as clean as I could to survive. And I really believe that made a major difference in my um, comeback, if you will. Oh. So if you ask me, how much do I believe in that? I almost died, you know, so I really do believe in that a thousand percent. And that really helped me um, not only survive, not only get out of the hospital, but also get back into life, being as normal as I can and back in the bodybuilding. Um, that made a major difference in my life. 
So it was about a year and a half. So that happened in June of 2020. And then in a year later, not only did I get back healthy, um, I because I couldn't even walk. So it took me several months to walk. I was using a walker, all those get back to walking, just kind of being normal. And I got back to the gym and a year later, I was like, let's do a show. And people thought I was nuts. And I knew that my stage presence wouldn't be, wow, she's ripped, she's shred. I knew that wasn't going to be the case. But mentally, I knew I had to get back on stage or I just would never do it again. And I would never have the confidence to just be a strong person. I, I just knew I had to do it. So I went into prep. It was an easy prep because it just... I just wanted to see if my body could handle a little bit of cardio, a little bit of dieting down and so forth. And it survived. Um, and I was so happy that I got on stage because one of the things now is I wear a bag on my abs. That's how I go to the bathroom. I can't take it off. And I mean, I can't leave it off, if you will. It has to be in 24 seven. And you see that on stage and Actually, I was quite nervous going on stage with it. And now it's like, I feel like it's my cape. You know, I feel like super Superman, Superwoman, whatever you want to call it on stage with it, because I know what it takes or what it took to get here and what it takes to stay here. Um, so that was leading up um, to the 21 uh, going back on stage. And it, it, it's been surreal. Um, there's so many people that look at me and they're like, wow, you've been through so much, but your health isn't, isn't the best, but I still pursue bodybuilding. I feel that it keeps me as healthy as possible, um, being stronger, eating the right foods and both mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. So after uh, 21, I said to myself, I want to go into women's bodybuilding. I've always wanted women's bodybuilding. I love that division, but everyone kept telling me over the years, you're too small. You need to gain so much muscle that I, you know, I said, I almost died. I don't care. We're doing this. So um, I got a coach that worked with me and I never have been as shredded in my life. Wasn't big, but I was shredded and I looked great. And I was just amazed. And I, I did Tampa Pro and I won over 15 55, which I was so happy about. And it was just an awakening for me. It's like, Cheryl, you went from almost dying to having an ileostomy the rest of your life. You don't have a lot of intestines to keep food in, but somehow you're making it work because I'm so meticulous. I have to be so exact with everything. And you're going in the gym. And you're going on stage and you're with all of these wonderful pros and they're accepting you. They're not looking down at you. They're like, wow, you're on stage with us. This is awesome. And it's just a great feeling. So um, did that in 22. And then in 23, I was invited to um, Masters Olympia. I was that was like amazing. And then I got sixth place in that in women's bodybuilding. So it's just like so many wonderful things are going on for me because I just never gave up. I, I just never gave up and I don't look at what I can't do. I just keep looking at what I can do. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I can't do something, I just figure out a way I can do it. So I don't know if I was long winded there, um, but that's been, you know, my career up to this point. And hopefully I'll be getting on stage again this year um, my condition kind of held me back. I really wanted to do Tampa pro this year. Um, but I had a few setbacks, so, um, that's not going to happen, but I am in prep and I am hoping to do a show, uh, around September, October timeframe this year. Do you see it as like your advocate, like an advocate in any way, or like you're using like your experiences to help others see like what's possible? Are you a personal trainer who wants to scale and grow your business online? Have you been coaching online for years, yet don't know how to incorporate online into your current business model? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. 
Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. The Weight Room Podcast is thrilled to announce our new sponsor, Prime Science. They're leaders in harnessing scientific research to revolutionize your fitness journey. With a firm foundation in the latest health sciences, Prime Science offers innovative products to help you achieve and surpass your fitness and health goals. These tools are more than just accessories. They're the result of rigorous scientific research aimed at optimizing your health. Dive deeper into how you can transform your approach to fitness at primescience.co.uk. Trust me, with Prime Science, you're in scientifically sound hands. I'm definitely an inspiration to others. I don't go out there and, and go, look at me, look at me, you know, and, and, and say, I did this, this, and this. I believe not by talking, but by doing. And so many people just see me at the gym every day. They see me on stage. They, they just see what I do. And that speaks volumes to people. Because I could sit here and talk all day about it. And that's great. But seeing me in action, just seeing the day in, day out. And then you look at yourself and you're like, well, she can do that. Maybe there's a way I could figure out whatever's going on with me to make things work. You know, and I feel grateful for that opportunity. I, I really do. I really feel there was a reason for this happening. And I feel that being an inspiration uh, to others and, and showing others how you can continue despite the odds, um, I think that was meant to be. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Um, there's people that go, why do you why do you continue bodybuilding? You're not making money at this. So what's the point? And I'm like, Life is not always about money. Yes, we need money to live and do things, but if you live just for money, it's not really a satisfying life. So when I see somebody at the gym or whatever come up to me and go, you know, I was going through this, you know, and then I throw your story or I see you every day and I figured something out, that just touches my heart and says, it's worth everything that I'm doing and I'm just going to continue doing that. One of the things where um, we're limited on certain things. Um, I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine about this because um, he asked me, he goes, why don't you go to the beach or um, why don't you go to ball games? You know, things that, you know, I used to like to do. And I gave him this. OK, my life has to be around the bathroom. And, and I'm not saying this for anyone to feel sorry for me. It's just the mindset. Reality is I have to be around the bathroom all the time. So I go to the beach, I lay on the beach, you know, stun, you know, get your oil on, whatever. Now I got to go to the bathrooms. So now I got to make this long trip to the bathroom. Go, come back. Maybe an hour later, got to make it again. So it's not as enjoyable for me, but the average person doesn't see it that way because you don't have to experience it. You'll say, oh, the bathrooms are way over there. But you know how many times I have to go. So I'm not saying that, okay, my life is terrible. I can't do a lot of things. What, I, what I'm saying is you have to be realistic on what you can't do, but find things you can do. And when you're around people, let them know that. Don't make them, I mean, you don't want them to feel sorry for you, but just let them know like, hey, I can't go to the beach because of this. And it's not because I don't want to hang out with you. It's just because it's more work for me. Why don't we try something else? And when you think of it that way, then you're not stressed out. There are a lot of things you can still do. But I think people look at what they can't do anymore because that's what they're used to. But think about things you can do. That's where the key is. You said that a lot of doctors were like kind of looking at it as like, oh, well, that's that's good that you're doing that. But did you get any any at all like negative looks or negative like, I can't believe you're not doing this. Can't believe you're not eating. What is our food not good enough? Or and then like absolutely. How did you absolutely? How did you, keep, how did you keep like the mindset going of like? Obviously, you had like a little bit a little bit of experience with eating healthy and things like that. But did you did you ever start to think like okay maybe maybe this is this is just something that I don't need to do or you know maybe you know this is the medical community they they must know like what what I should be doing or. Was it pretty much just firm, like, I'm doing it this way because if it, you know, I'm, I'm choosing my path, I'm choosing my destiny kind of thing. 
I did not sway at all. I was adamant this is what I'm doing and no one could stop me. It was very difficult. But again, I've had years of experience with doctors telling me this is right for you. And it wasn't. And I had to learn, you know, when you touch the fire, you get burnt. Well, eventually I realized I'm going to keep getting burnt. So it took a lot of years to realize how important the nutrition factor was. And now that I'm so headstrong over it, no one can stop me. It, it, it's just like I could be down and out. It doesn't matter. When when I woke up, you know, like from, you know, um, the situation and they put me in the room and they say, OK, finally, you can eat. I wasn't fully awake. I was still in pain. You know, my my faculties weren't 100 percent. But because my beliefs were so strong, I knew exactly what I had to do. And that's why I couldn't be swayed. I, I just couldn't. You know, every once in a while, the nurse would be like, hey, we brought you this. Go ahead and try. And it's like, no, I was just so adamant. I didn't care if I starved. I knew that eating clean was the only thing that was going to save me. Because honestly, if I ate poorly, I don't think I'd be here today. That's how, um, you know, serious my condition was because they still didn't know that if I was going to make it or not. So I really feel that the clean eating made such a difference. What I've come to find out is they depend on medicine. That's really what it is. You know, I could be eating sausage and all these foods that are really, you know, killing me. And that's OK, because I have a pill for that and that'll help this. And it really does it. You know, it, it's OK for like, you know, occasional upset or whatever. But for long term, we all know the more that your body's inflamed, the more you're prone to disease. That's basics 101. So I don't understand why they don't believe in that, the practice of it, because if you look through a lot of the medical journals, they'll tell you that hands down 100 percent. But it really hasn't gone mainstream to the local doctor, to the local nurse, et cetera, to practice that. That's what I don't understand. I really don't. So I've had to learn over the years by, you know, trial and error, what really works. And fortunately, I had that knowledge um, before my accident, before I almost died, that this is what I had to do to stay alive and, and continue staying the way I am. Yeah, would I love to eat a pizza or a taco or a horse? You know, I'm not, you know, a machine, but I know that if I eat that, what the consequences are. And that's what stops me from doing that. Real, It really does. You know, sometimes people ask me, how can you be so strict on when you're in prep, you know, eating the exact foods and this and this? Don't you want this? And I'm always like, oh, yeah, I'm hardcore bodybuilder. I do exactly well, part of it is that I know if I eat that junk, I'm going to I'm going to really feel bad. So the condition I have kind of keeps me on track anyway. And I'd rather feel good and live a lot longer than feel like garbage. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people with ileostomies, um, GI issues and stuff like that, that I talk to or follow, you know, on Instagram, et cetera. And they'll be like, oh, I just had sausage and. I knew I shouldn't have ate that. No, I feel like garbage. And they just repeat this pattern over and over again. And it's like, don't you realize this is what's causing you to feel bad? And then they go to the doctor and they get a pill and then they kind of feel better. And then they go through this cycle again. And I just wish they would realize what they're doing, because in a way they admit it. It's like, oh, I ate this again and now I feel bad. Well, if you eat it, you feel bad. Do you think you should stop? But a lot of us don't do that. They just keep repeating that pattern because the doctors say or the medical society says we have a pill for that. And we know that's not always the case. I just think it starts much. It should start much sooner than it does. I agree. And, and I can give you like a personal example for me. Um, because of my condition, my B12 will always be low and my D3 will always be low. I could take as many vitamins as I want, but they just don't absorb. OK. And in general, you can understand, you know, the health risks with that. So you go to the doctor and you explain that and they go, yep, they look at your blood work and they go, yes, it's low. You should take some D3 and some B12. Yes. But when I take the vitamins in pill form, um, I don't absorb them. And they go, yeah, because you condition it. and they're just looking and they're nodding at me. So what's a solution? 
And they kind of look at me like I'm crazy because they don't have a solution, but they don't know what to say. So then I go, what about injectable B vitamins and D vitamins? And they go, yeah, that, that could really help you. Okay, so can you prescribe them? Oh, no, we can't prescribe them. Well, why can't you prescribe them? It's not part of the health industry. Wow. So for me, I have to go to an alternative medicine doctor, which is all legal, of course. And, you know, they see my blood work. They're allowed to prescribe it, but it's out of pocket because it's not part of the insurance health care. But your regular doctor, they won't even suggest it. They won't even say anything unless you bring it up. And like I bring it up and they're like, yeah, that's a great idea, but I'm sorry, I can't help you. That's pretty sad. I had one time, <clears throat> it was a, a family a PA doctor. And I was seeing her for years um, back in like 2012, 13. I was about 30% body fat. I was miserable. And she was always like, well, you're on the spectrum. You're in good shape. You know, that kind of thing. So, you know, 2015, 16 comes rolling around, you know, and I'm seeing her. And of course, I'm in better shape and all that. And she looks at me, she goes, can you help me out with losing weight? You know, give me some suggestions. And I'm thinking... A few years ago, you told me I was in perfect shape, and now you're asking for advice. I just find that so funny, you know, but it is what it is. Um, and then when it comes to the medicines and stuff, I had a friend who um, uh, I think we went to Columbia, and he got sick over there, you know, just like a cold flu, you know, whatever it was. And immediately they're like, um, we'll give you a, a vitamin C shot, B shot, you know, they're just giving them shots for all these vitamins. And it was like no big deal. And over here, you can't get that. And that to me doesn't make any sense because if other countries realize just vitamins in general help, why don't we see that? And it's got to just come down to the money, the pharmaceuticals, because mm -hmm. we know injectable vitamins work. They go right to the source. There's nothing wrong with them, but we choose not to make that mainstream in our offices. The only thing that they do have is a, a B12 shot and you can get it once a month. That's the only thing the insurance will allow. And that won't do anything for you. It, it seems like if that were any other business, it would be seen as like a scam. It would be seen as like, how, how can we create laws for this to, for, to fix this? But it, because it's kind of ingrained as what it is, it's just, it's, it's passable. You would need somebody so high up that has so much power to make a dent in the system. It, it really is. So for me personally, I just share my experiences with people and, and hope I make a difference, you know, on my level, you know, for people. I want to talk a little bit about the food thing, because obviously food is so powerful for bodybuilding. How do you, because of, you know, you, you said, I think, um, was it 10% you said? 10% of... Uh, um the nutrient? Uh, no, I've got about 10, 15 minutes okay, for it to okay. stay in my body. Yeah. Where the average person has about two and a half hours before it goes to your large intestine and then does other stuff from there. So how do you, do you just like eat more, but more frequently or, or where do you, where do you get those nutrients to kind of make a difference, especially in the world of bodybuilding where it is so important? The Weight Room Podcast is proud to be partnered with Prime Science. Our new sponsor and a trailblazer in health technology. Prime Science is dedicated to pushing the boundaries of what's possible in health and fitness through extensive research and scientific validation. Their products are a testament to their commitment to safe, scientifically backed health optimization. To learn more about how Prime Science is redefining fitness with valid science, visit primescience.co.uk. Join us in embracing a future where fitness meets rigorous scientific practice with Prime Science. This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran-owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. To be honest with you, I really wish I, I had a magic answer. Um, what I do is I eat consistently. It's kind of like bodybuilding. You know, we eat six, seven meals a day. But I make sure what I eat is the same all the time because my body gets used to it. Now, some people may argue, oh, you're not going to get all your nutrients. You need to do this, this, and this. But you have to realize my system is very fragile. So any change, even if it's a good change, can disrupt my body. Like when I go from 
um, bulking, if you will, to prep, I have to do it very slowly because even though we're just changing the foods around, my body's like, whoa, 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 stop that. You can't do that. Even though they're the same foods and just switched around, we have to do it slowly because that's how sensitive my system is. So because I'm very consistent with the timing, et cetera, that's how I'm getting most of the nutrients in. I can't put any uh, junk food in there. I can't put any coffee or any of those things in between the meals because those things rob you of your nutrients. So that's all key for me. So if I'm going to drink coffee, I'm going to do it outside the eating window. The same thing with caffeine outside the eating window. So I make sure all the food is gone. Then I could do that because it really doesn't matter at that point. And one th other thing to mention is dehydration. I am constantly dehydrated. My body can't stay hydrated no matter how much I drink. So it's just the level of how dehydrated I am, but I could never physically be hydrated because of the lack of intestines that I have. So I'm constantly drinking BCAAs. You know, some coaches will be like, oh my goodness, you got to stop that. You're close to show. My body, nope. I am drinking it, you know, by the gallons because my body needs it um, because it's just constantly sweating it out. What would you say is your gallons per day or ounces per day or however you measure it? Um, I just drink about a gallon a day gotcha. because if I drink too much, then then I'll actually dehydrate me even more. So I, it's a playing game. It just depends on how my body's feeling. There's some days that I'll walk into the gym. I've done everything the same. I walk into the gym and my body's dehydrated. And the reason, the way I know that is my bag fills up and it won't stop filling up. That's my body's way of saying you are severely dehydrated. You need to just stop and chill. And I have to listen. And it's nothing that I did wrong. My body just decided to take a turn and then I have to go home. Um, I sit on very concentrated BCAAs um, because you don't want too much water in when you're dehydrating for my condition, because it could actually dehydrate you more. So you're just trying to have your system calm down to the point it could start taking a little bit of, you know, um, electrolytes in. Otherwise, you end up at the hospital, you know, have to get the IV and, you know, stay overnight and kind of thing. And I try to avoid that like the plague. I just hate having to do that. But occasionally, you know, it happens and I have to do it. Yeah. And for training, I mean, how do you, what, what does your training look like as far as, you know, making sure you don't over, oh, like we're talking about hydration and, and making sure yeah. you don't do too much as far as like sweating goes and trying to replenish and all that kind of stuff. And then just generally, like, what is, what does training look like in that experience? I'm very, I'm a very hardcore trader. I'm very intense when I train and I can't slow it down. It's like, I go in there and I kick butt and all that. So before I go to the gym, I have my pre-workout, I drink whatever. Um, I wait about 15 minutes, let everything, you know, come out kind of thing. And then um, in the middle of my workouts, I have a very concentrated um, amount of BCAAs that I sip slowly through the workout. And that gets me by. If I drink too much, which is crazy, I'll dehydrate. So that's what I do. I just drink a, you know, very uh, minimal amount of concentrated BCAs and it usually 99% of the time works for me. Gotcha. And I usually last about two hours with that. You also said like you have to make changes very slowly. Like is your prep extended? Um, basically the prep may be extended. It, it really depends on how my body's reacting. So when we go from bulking um, to prep, it's just we're reducing the food and the a uh, little bit of the food and we're reducing the fats a lot um, at that point. When I reduce the fats too fast, my body kind of like has a bad reaction so that I just have to slow down. And that'll go for about a couple of weeks. Once I get over that hurdle, my body's ready to drop like crazy. I could start dropping food fast. I start dropping body fat very fast and I lean out very quickly, but it's just that little interim of a few weeks where our body's like, you know, Cheryl, you just got to be a little careful here. But once we get over that hurdle, I'm good to go. And that's one of my secrets to leaning out very well on stage. It's partially because of my body.
it doesn't stay hydrated. So when I get to that ending point, I have to be a little careful because I can get too shredded and then I got to pull back. And it's not um, any fat burners, or whatever. It's just my body loves to shed. It, it just loves being dehydrated. And so what does reversing look like for you? Um, usually reversing actually goes quite well um, because you're not adding a lot of food at once. And my body loves the nutrients. So that is good. But going from bulking to prep, you're taking stuff away. So that's when your body's like, whoa, 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 I was happy here. What are you doing? And that happens to anybody. But just because of my condition, it just gets a little worse. So it's just like it's I don't know if my body's just scared of change. And it's like freaking out, like PTSD or whatever. And then when it realizes, okay, Cheryl, you're going to be okay, then we're good to go. Yeah. Um, but again, that that's pretty much it. But I don't add anything different into uh, my plan, whether it's bulking or uh, prep. I mean, the carbs are usually the same, all of those kind of things. Um, because if I add anything different, my body can react poorly. So we always stay with the same stuff. So from a coaching perspective, giving me a diet plan, it's pretty much the same foods, just taking little bits here and there out kind of thing. To add to that, I don't do vegetables. So that makes prep for me much easier too. Hmm. Is, and I guess that's just harder for the body to completely break down. Exactly. It is. Um, and the less intestines you have, the greater chance for vegetables to get stuck in your intestines and cause damage. And that's the last thing that you want. So I don't do vegetables at all. You know, getting to step on, on stages that, you know, a lot of bodybuilders aspire to step on and things like that. I mean, what is, what does that feel like? What does that mean to you when you think about like, when you think back and it's like, okay, I was in this bed and I heard people saying that, you know, I might not make it, I might not live through the night. And then you flash forward and, you know, you're standing on these bodybuilding stages and you're amongst, you know, some of the best bodybuilders in the world. Like, what is that feeling? What does that mean in that moment? It is an incredible feeling. I'm very um, aggressive when it comes to, okay, I want to be the best that I can be. And I'm so focused on results that I, I have to take a step back and humble myself and realize where I came from. And getting on stage I do that every time. I, I just get amazed, like, you know, Cheryl, you've been through a lot and you're up here. You've already won. It doesn't matter you you get the first place trophy or not. You've already won. And you're with all of these incredible women, you know, and you're competing against them. I mean, like, how awesome is that for somebody who has such a bad condition um, who could have just stayed in that bed and just, you know, been average, you know, can have the ileostomy, you know, go to work and all that and go, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, I'll have just the basic life. But no, I chose to get back into this, you know, competition field and, and be with those bodybuilders. And it's just an incredible feeling. It, 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 it keeps me motivated because it's like if I can get on stage, I can do this again and I can overcome any hurdle that comes at me. So why should I stress about life? Why should I stress about anything? And especially people seeing my ileostomy on stage, I don't care. You know, it, it's like, I know a lot of people who are embarrassed by theirs and they don't want to go out. They don't want to go to the gym and nothing. And here I am standing on one of the biggest, you know, bodybuilding stages in the world and I'm showing it off. Um, it just means the world to me. It, it, it just keeps reminding me of how strong I am. Um, how diligent I am and how blessed I am actually to be up there and grateful. Well, it's incredibly inspiring and, you know, just having that, that literal platform to just say, Hey, this is possible. And, you know, I'm doing it. I'm proud. I'm blessed. I see myself uh, in this light. I see my position, my situation in this certain light. It's, it's really cool that you're doing that. And I appreciate you coming on the podcast and, you know, sharing with us tonight, all that, that journey and certainly think that people will hear this and, and be able to um, apply that to situations in their own life. Once again, I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing all that good stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. If you want to, before we head out, if you want to share any socials or anything like that, you can.
Oh, uh, my Instagram is IFBB Pro Cheryl Mears. And on Facebook, I just go by Cheryl Mears IFBB Pro. If you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer, somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience, make sure you go check out the new Coach's Corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coach's Corner is down in the description below.